Hello and welcome to the Spotlight Games podcast. This week, we're going to be discussing the death of Google Stadia. Sony rumors that they'll be cashing in with another remake of a five-year-old game. Mario's ass has gotten significantly smaller in the new Mario movie and it's spooky season, y'all. So we are bringing you all the spooky discussions for the rest of this month right here on the Spook Light Games podcast. Joining me today, as always, my sweet dumpster boy, the scariest man I know. Cayman Darty. Cayman, how you doing? I'm tired, Patrick. I'm tired. Today, this week, it's been a long week, and we're already we don't, we're only on Tuesday if you're yep. watching on stream, or Thursday if you're listening to audio, but it's, the week's not going to get any shorter. No, sir. We're listening on audio. No, sir. But, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here. You're here. I'm here. Um, you know, the week has truly just begun. Even if it really it's Thursday, has. it's just begun. It really has. Um, today, as of this recording, um, I have a new nephew. Whoa. Yep. He was born this Did afternoon. Did you to Goodwill? Uh, maybe take him to Goodwill. Sure. Yeah, he was born. Well, he's, 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 Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, it's my the fifth one, so... There's diminishing returns in terms of congratulations hey. when you get that far in. I was the fifth one in my family, and look where I am. You know, it's interesting, though, because my brother's not Catholic. So, not sure why they have five kids. But, sure, hey, you know what? Sure. I, they're just presumably just keep popping them off until they can't. So Hey, I mean, that's that's the way the news goes. Uh, or, or so I'm told. Cayman, we have a lot of video game stuff to talk about because this is the Spotlight Games podcast where each week we spotlight the latest and greatest in the world of video games. You can get it by subscribing to our YouTube channel or by searching for Spotlight Games in your favorite podcast app. And hey, you can be on the show by tuning in as we record live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash Spotlight Games pod. So be, so be sure to follow us there so that you're notified when we go live so you can be part of the conversation. It's October which means we have to get spooky all month long to celebrate. You may, may remember if you've been with us since day one last October, we brought all sorts of spooky topics to the show, but came in. We were just, but a wee baby podcast back then. It's true. So at the end of this month, we're going to be leading to another bracket episode to decide the spookiest game ever made. So be sure to let us know which games have to be included in the bracket and any other spooky topics that you want us to discuss by DMing us on Instagram at Spotlight Games Pod or on Twitter at Spot Games Pod, or send us some electronic mail to mail at spotlightgames.net. Electronic mail, Patrick. Yes. That's look, a lot can be done in electronic mail. You can send pictures, you can send videos. Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? I've I don't know. I've I'm still using AOL Messenger. Yeah, you are. Doo -doo. That, that was a little away a, or the sign off. Yeah. That was the sign -off there you go. Uh, Cameron, it's Tuesday uh, in, in the real world in, in real time. So that means a new episode of Save Trash Cinema came out. Tell the folks at home about Razorback. So Razorback is a 1984 Ausploitation film uh, directed by Russell McCahey. As I found out, that's how you actually pronounce mm. his name on the episode. Uh, we were joined by none other than uh, short film director. Actually, not even short film director. He has a feature length film coming out uh, next year uh, called Kill Your Lover. But he just released a new short called Do Not Resuscitate that is absolutely fucking fantastic. He joined us on the episode. He actually brought the film to us to be saved or canned. And uh, if you want to find out what our verdict was at the end of the episode, go give it a listen. It is a very insightful conversation about art house, grind house, and uh, Duran Duran, surprisingly <laughs> enough. True, true. Uh, ooh, Kayla in the chat. Wearing her ghost attire. How are you doing, Kayla? Uh, thanks for joining us. Cayman, we have oh, but a lot to discuss today. <laughs> we do. So why don't we jump in with... What we've been playing, because that's how we start every episode of the Spotlight Games podcast. Cayman, have you been playing anything since we last spoke? So, as as the audience knows, I am getting married. True. Um, shock, True. You surprisingly. Won't, you won't shut the fuck up about it. I know. I, I was having, I have this like crisis of conscious moment where I have to make the decision. Like, I get married this week. Oh, fuck. I didn't even mention that in the intro. I was like, I was going to say, like, this is the last time you're going to be a bachelor. As True. A, yeah, that's right. I that's fucked right. up. I'm, I'm, no, terrible. you're fine. It's, you're great. It's all right. 
Uh, I've talked about it enough. The audience doesn't care anymore. But uh, <laughs> I had a crisis of conscience where two things happened where I said, one, will I look good in jewelry? Mm. And I don't know if that if I will. So we're just going to have to roll with it. OK. Oh, for sure. Second thing. Is something that I can't remember anymore. Now I do. <laughs> the crisis of conscious moment was like, I've spent like the last year of my life planning this wedding, getting ready for this wedding. And that's, that's who I've become. Yeah. I've perpetually been a man who's about to get married for the last year. Mm -hmm. After I get married, who am I then? What are you going to talk about? Well, who, who, what personality do I have after yeah. this? Look, as someone who has been married for just north of five years now, I, I don't have an answer for you. I start a so, podcast, I guess. I start another podcast. Yeah. I don't even know what we would do next. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, look, between between this, because this is the week, I've been very swamped and overwhelmed. But that doesn't mean that I have not been playing a fuck ton of Dead by Daylight still. Hell yeah. Also, new season of Rocket League. I'm back in the throes of Rocket League once more. Mm. And it's... It's fucking Rocket League, okay? Sure. I will say that I think over time, I've gotten much better. But the disparity between being good at Rocket League and being bad at Rocket League is so vast <laughs> that, like, I couldn't even say, like, if you watched me play and you were, like, someone who just plays casually, you'd be like, oh, Cayman is really good at Rocket League. And then you watch someone who actually is good at Rocket League, and you're like, wow, Cayman's awful at Rocket League. And that's where I am right now in my life. Sure. In this current season of Rocket League is, like, I'm good enough to play against people who are good, mm -hmm. um, but I'm bad enough to lose every single fucking time I play against someone who is good. So, sure. you know, I'm also hey. getting older. And here's the thing about Rocket League that no one ever tells you. Once you hit a certain age, you're done. Oh, yeah. Like, you're fucked. Like, you cannot play Rocket League anymore. You're no longer good at Rocket mm -hmm. League. You're just done. I think I was watching a video. I think the oldest person to ever hit, like, Grand Champion, I think it's the highest level of Rocket League, is, like, 35 years old. Clock's ticking. I know. So, there's, I mean, there's no fucking way in hell I'm ever going to get there. Especially to, at my age. To 35? Well, that's true, too. I drink way too much. Sure. I mean, what are you drinking right now? uh four roses mm. so i'm out of beer i drank all of it on yesterday's recording of the upcoming episode of same trash cinema so uh poor Sid. cheers to that cheers to yes yes poor Sid. she's so, marrying me i know i still don't get i still don't get what she's doing uh john in the chat hey john i lose to myself in rocket league i mean that takes That's that takes true skill. So I, since last recording, I've only been playing more God of War 2018. I'm about to finish it uh, on Steam Deck, and I'm having a grand old time. So instead of boring you and the audience with that, I actually wanted to talk about not something I played today, but something I watched today, and something that maybe you watched today too, the new Dead Space trailer. Good God, Patrick. Dead Space, Patrick. by far one of my most anticipated games right now. The remake of the 2008 question mark video game from EA. Set in space. Fucking so scary. Like top five scariest game of all time. And they're remaking it from the ground up. And they we got our first look at the gameplay. And right now, if you're if you're watching live or if you're watching the YouTube, you're seeing the video. And this just looks so goddamn good. Came in. This game looks fucking fantastic. Oh. I mean, look, the original Dead Space is fucking fantastic. So, like, I, I mean, look, sure, there are examples, most recently being, like, the Grand Theft Auto trilogy uh, remaster that was just dog shit. Right. Absolutely fucking broken-ass mess of shit. Funny as hell to watch videos of it, but <laughs> apparently playing it, not so funny. Um this is definitely a ground up remake that looks way more like Resident Evil 2's remake yeah. than anything else. And that just hypes me up even more for it. Um, I I like I if you're gonna do a remake, like this is the here's the thing, and we'll get into another rumored remake that's coming up. Um but Tell for us me, the thing. for me, if you're gonna do a remake, like don't fucking remake shit that came out 10 years ago. Don't just don't do it. That's not fun. You need to have like a 15 year 
gap should be like the minimum that you'd be sure. like, you cannot remake anything in this time frame. Like diminishing returns. Yeah. Like give me like a full remake. Like if the if the rumor's true that Bloober team is doing a remake of Silent Hill 2. Like oh, I would love yes. that. Absolutely would love that. Um, and there's a ton of games. And I especially think that games like horror games in particular, because some of the best horror games that have ever come out of are older games, right? Yeah. Keep giving us those, man. Keep bringing shit. Give us, dude, you know what I would fucking do if you were to be like, you brought Eve back, like remade Eve, like that really weird RPG. Um, I think it was Capcom who did it. It was an RPG horror game um, that was like just weird as shit. Like bring that back. Parasite Eve? Parasite Eve, thank yeah. you. Yeah, like, so, bring... so fucking weird. Yeah, like bring that shit back. Dino Crisis? Being oh, yeah. Clamoring for Dino Crisis. I want more of that shit. Yeah. I don't want remakes of shit that's... that's I don't, look, I, I get that The Last of Us remake was really cool and stuff, but like... <laughs> Did we need it? No. But you know what we do need? Fucking Dead Space back. Yeah. And that's the thing. You know? Like, we need that back. We need, yeah. you need to keep bringing I, these things back. It's so funny. Watching this trailer, I am I think about how we haven't had this kind of a game in so long. And within, like, three or four weeks of each other, we're getting this and Callisto Protocol. It's like... Callisto Protocol is the very is the wild card for me. Yeah. Because watching it, I'm like... And what, especially watching this trailer and then like thinking about both together, I'm like, Callisto Protocol looks way darker. Yes, it does. Like way more fucked up. And that to me, yeah. It's someone my, who likes fucked up shit. Yeah. I, I will say my my one fear with a Dead Space remake, because like it's it's a great game, but I, it's a game I haven't played in at least 13 years. Sure. So if, if it's like a one to one remake similar to the last of us part one i i hope that they've done some quality of life improving similar to like like what you mentioned the resident evil 2 remake where they kind of reworked stuff i hope that there's a, some reworking here mm. um just so that it doesn't feel like you know a game from 2007 or 6 or 7 or 8 or whatever it was but yeah we'll see yeah, but yeah i'm i'm stoked about point, it. yeah i mean this but this is very much a ground up remake 100 yeah just like we're give, putting it you know the inner workings in it on an, in a new shell this is the, or like a hermit crab going to find a larger shell like this right. is they made a new hermit crab yeah so and i he, i couldn't be more excited so chew on that oh i'm gonna chew on it you know what i'm not gonna chew on because they're not getting any new hermit crabs, crab shells, Cayman. Mm. That's Google Stadia. Actually, it's funny you say that. They are getting new hermit crabs, but the shell is dead. Correct. <laughs> so Google Stadia, for those who don't know, Google Stadia was a, a streaming platform announced, what, five years ago, maybe four years ago, something like that. Hmm. It was before the pandemic. It was right before the pandemic. Let's see. Google Stadia. I want to say it was 2019. November 2019 was the launch date. So we're coming up on three years. We're coming up on three years. Uh, And it was announced by Google, who Google, you know, famously, they love to kill their own products. And they finally killed Stadia. So I'm pulling from Jay Peters and Alex Kranz at The Verge. They write, Google is shutting down Stadia, its cloud gaming service. The service will remain live for players until January 18th, 2023. Google will be refunding all Stadia hardware purchased through the Google Store, as well as all the games and add-on content purchased from the Stadia Store. Google expects those refunds will be completed in mid-January. Quote, a few years ago, we also launched a consumer gaming service, Stadia, Stadia Vice President and GM Phil Harrison said in a blog post. He goes on to say, and while Stadia's approach to streaming games for consumers was built on a strong technology foundation, it hasn't gained the traction with users that we expected, so we've made the difficult decision to begin winding down our Stadia streaming service, end quote. Employees on the Stadia team will be distributed to other parts of the company, sources say. Harrison says, Google sees opportunities to apply Stadia's technology to other parts of Google, like YouTube, Google Play, and its AR efforts. And the company also plans to, quote, make it available to our industry partners, which aligns with where we see the future of gaming headed, he wrote. The writing has been on the wall for Stadia for a while now, most recently when Logitech announced its new cloud gaming handheld last week, and Stadia was one of the few cloud gaming, or yeah, one of the few cloud gaming services not mentioned. But Stadia has been facing rumors of its demise practically from the start, 
Google has a habit of killing projects only a few years after they launch, and Stadia, a cloud gaming service from a company with few ties in the gaming industry, seemed like a prime candidate for an early demise. Cayman, scale of 1 to 10. 1 being you saw this coming from 3 years away to 10 being you were just so befumbled, you are fucking shocked out of your skin. How shocked are you right now? So I'm not shocked in the absolute slightest. Uh, you, I, when they announced this, I was like, yeah, this is going to end with a wet fart. And shockingly, it ended with a wet fart. Yeah. Who was shocked actually was a bunch of game developers. Who, yes. Who learned that Google Stadia was shutting down through a news report. That Google Stadia was shutting down yeah. and have games that are due to be released in the next month to two months. So I think one of them was like, we're re literally releasing a game in the beginning of December and then Google just for Google Stadia and Google Stadia is shutting down in January. Yeah. So heartbreaking for them. It, yeah. No, that absolutely sucks. And that's just another where it's like, oh, you're just a massive corporation with masses amounts of money. This doesn't make sense to you to keep it going, so you shut it down, which is just what companies do. But like Google Stadia survived as long as it did on these developers making games for it. And the fact that you didn't even have the balls to be like, hey, guys, heads up, you might want to reconfigure your games to be released elsewhere because this won't exist for your games to be released on. Yeah. And they didn't fucking do that. Just disgusting shit um and it infuriates me but to the point earlier made i mean you could see this coming from the moment they announced what it yeah. was the idea behind google stadium stadia though is i think it's a great idea me too i think there's a lot there and maybe there's going to be a company out there that figures out a way to rework some of this I do think it's good on on Google that they're offering refunds. I, I that's the, actually one of the most shocking parts of this to me, is that I I've never heard of like a, a console or like anything this big shutting down and then being like, and you get your money back. Yeah, it's just so that I do respect that, and I'm glad well, that part of it makes me question like if the fact that they're doing that is because so few people actually spent money on it. That they were like, we can afford to actually do this because because they did. It does specify only if you bought it through the Google store. So like mm. if Stadia sold 100,000 copies, how many of those 100,000 were actually in the Google store? Maybe it's 15. I don't know. So yeah. Yeah, interesting stuff. I mean, it's 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 sad. It's I don't I definitely don't think that this is like a a negative omen or a bad omen for cloud gaming. I think it's just Stadia was just a bad move. And it, it yeah, just, no, I, this yeah. is definitely not a bad omen for cloud gaming. Look, cloud gaming, the truth of the matter is, is the future of gaming, whether you like it or not. The, the question is, is like, who's going to carry the mantle? And it appears if everything shakes out that it will probably be Microsoft who is the one that kind of carries the torch and leads video games into the future. Um, I mean, they've got shit like the Samsung TV that will have innate um, Game Pass built in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Logitech gaming system is another one that comes to mind. So there's definitely a world. I mean, cloud gaming will be the future. I don't think that cloud gaming will be the future in the next five years, um, but probably in 10 years, I think. It'll be one of the bigger th options that you have. I don't yeah. think consoles are going away, but cloud gaming definitely is going to take several leaps forward. I agree. I um, I do think I I'm excited for a future of cloud gaming, but uh, I yeah, just stay to ain't it. You know what else ain't it, Cayman? Oh, Jesus, yeah. <sighs> So a rumored Horizon Zero Dawn remake for PlayStation 5 is in the works at Sony. This comes from Andy Robinson at VGC. It says, Sony Interactive Entertainment is planning to release a remaster of PS4 title Horizon Zero Dawn for PlayStation 5. That's according to a report by MP1ST. 
which uh, VG, VGC can corroborate via their own sources. The updated version of the 2017 Guerrilla Game Style will feature improved visuals to bring it up to par with this year's uh, sequel, Horizon Forbidden West, in the form of new character models, lighting, and animations, it is claimed. In addition, it's claimed the new version of Zero Dawn will add accessibility features, graphics modes, and the quality of life improvements to the game itself. Re-releases of the recent hit games aren't a new trend for PlayStation. The platform holder has already released multiple remasters and remakes for PlayStation 5, including Spider-Man, Ghost of Tsushima, Uncharted 4, and The Last of Us. A PC version of Horizon Zero Dawn was released in 2020 with improved draw distance and higher frame rates, but it mostly reused the assets and features from the PlayStation 4 version. In addition, the MP1ST report claims that Guerrilla Games is currently working on a Horizon multiplayer game for PlayStation 5 and PC, which matches what VGC reported last year. VGC understands that the studio has long intended to expand the Horizon series into multiplayer space. Sources have previously told us that co-op was first planned for the original Horizon game, but was ultimately scrapped so the development team could focus on other areas of the title. Zero Dawn concept art that leaked online in 2014, verified by VGC, even shows initial plans to have multiple players battle the game's huge mechanical beasts in a similar uh, scenario similar to Capcom's Monster Hunter games. Sources said that Sony had been keen to include co-op in this game's sequel, Forbidden West, but Guerrilla decided to save the feature for a future project, which they believe would either be a standalone spinoff or Horizon 3. I just... Look... I was one of the people on the internet that was like, I see why The Last of Us is being remade. I think it makes sense to a degree. Mm. There is an audience there. The game is only nine years old, but like it was on PS3. That's two generations ago. The show's coming out, like all these things. Wait, Horizon Zero Dawn launched on PlayStation 3 as well? Last of Us. Last of Us, okay, sorry. Yeah. The Last of Us remake in ways made sense to me, but like even as someone who it made, like there were reasons that it made sense to me, there were still a lot of reasons that it's like, it doesn't though. Like there, mm. the PS4 remaster runs really well. I played it like a year and a half ago. Yeah. It looks good. Like it still looks like a PS3 game that was remastered on PS4, but like it's not like, you're not playing fucking silent hill on a ps5 and so like i ultimately I, I feel like i was like 70 30 70 percent of me was like i understand why it's being remade 30 percent is like ah, maybe it doesn't need to be horizon zero dawn it's like a 10 90 situation 10 percent of me understands why this is being remade 90 percent of me is like this is fucking dumb and the 10 percent of me is it's like they're making a show. So this is, I, I I guess, in theory for this new audience. But like the PS4 version runs very well on PS5. Yes. It looks very good on PS5. I don't understand why a game that was made five years ago is being remade on the PlayStation 5. Mike in the chat, Boston Mike, I think this is one of your first times being live in the audience. Welcome. Glad to have you. He says remake original God of War. Fuck yeah. I would love for them to remake the original. Fantastic God idea. I he, love Horizon Zero Dawn. One of I'm my the, like top 15 games for me. But this is fucking stupid. Can we boot Mike out of the chat, though? Because I have a sneaking suspicion he's about to ask me questions about Elden Ring. <laughs> and like, Mike, I told you, man, I had to record this podcast. I don't need you could you blow my shit up about Elden Ring questions. He's just in here to ask you questions because you're not texting him back. I get it. It's smart. Yeah. It's smart by him. That's fair. Um, but yeah, I just also, whoa, I actually, hold on. I don't know if I like this game. Talking about Horizon Zero Dawn or are you talking about Elden Ring? I don't know. Doesn't feel good <laughs> if you don't like Horizon Zero Dawn. Doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good, Mike. Doesn't feel good. Uh, but yeah, this, I don't know, this, this feels silly to me. Like it's so dumb. 2017 is when this game came out. It is 2022 just, came in. Just fucking, just fucking make horizon three with co-op or whatever yeah. the fuck you want to do. That's fine. It doesn't make sense. It's so but fucking dumb. Why do we need this? And like, again, like I, the whole, like with, I, I get like with the last time was in a way it made sense. But this I mean, just okay. doesn't. Yeah, Kayla makes a great point. It seems like a waste of resources. Yes. I totally agree. Yes. Totally a waste of resources. I was having this conversation with Sid. And when I mean having a conversation with Sid, I was yelling yeah, at yeah. Sid and Sid mm -hmm. was cross-stitching and ignoring me. But I had to get my thoughts out into the ether because we weren't recording yet. 
and I was like, you're taking a team who could be working on something way more important to make them work on something that means absolutely nothing and is probably going to end up getting you ridiculed. Like, don't get me wrong. If you remade it, I'll play it again, and I'll platinum it again, and it's a, it's a, it's fine. But also, I don't, I don't want to do that. Like, I want to play whatever the next Horizon is going to be. I don't want to replay the same shit again. Like, Sony, what are you fucking doing? Yeah, and and like it. So that that B roll I was just playing, I don't know if it came through well, but that was on PS4, and it looked incredible. So like. PS5, it's just going to look even like it's going to run better. It's going to look better. So like, yeah, it just, it's so silly. The only thing that I, if they remake this and include like multiplayer co-op type stuff, that would move my needle from like 10% to like 20%, but only to 20% because I, I would just align with you. Like just put it in the third game. Let me posit a question to you. Come on, bring it. If they released The Last of Us Part 1 with new content, do you think your opinion would be different on a remake of Horizon Zero Dawn? If they had re- if they had put new content in The Last of Us Part 1, would my opinion of Horizon be different? I think it would it would even be, it would be like I would be more upset that they were doing this with seemingly because like the, the co-op multiplayer it's, it's part of the rumor. Like we don't know that that is confirmed. So if it is just horizon again, Mm -hmm. similar to how the last of us was just the last of us again. And the last of us had new content. I would be pissed. Like you, you put new content in the last of us. Why didn't you put new content in? in No, no, no. That's yeah. What I'm saying is like, if they did put new content into, do you think that that would change or shift your opinion on, them remaking this game so like for instance right so let's say like there's two additional chapters that we didn't get in the last of us part two there's like just two new chapters with new story exposition new content included like that so like the game makes more sense to be remastered do you think that that like gives you a little bit like you feel a little bit better about this because i do okay because that's how i feel where it's like i'm looking at like what they did with the last of us i'm like well this doesn't make sense to me because a fresh coat of paint and you know for a fact they're going to charge 70 fucking dollars for this 100% they will and it just feels like you're you're mi- milking a teat that is already run dry yeah um and seems really fucking stupid yeah i i also i think it's hard for me to say because this is how i feel but if i wasn't such a huge last of us fan mm. i could see a world in which i would think the last of us remake was kind of a waste Mm. But I just love that game so much that like a new, a fresh coat of paint, I I was happy enough with like but then, totally you know, fine with me. But even then, like, I think that if you look at The Last of Us, which came out, what, 2011? 2013. Really? It was that late? Yeah. I thought that was what, OK. But even then, like, look, it, it came out on the PlayStation 3. The remaster for the PlayStation 4 obviously looked better, ran better. But ultimately the game looking like it does now, like that's a, a huge difference. I don't think we're going to see that level of difference between horizon, like zero dawn and forbidden. One hundred percent. Yeah. There's not that much. And that's the issue. Like we always talk about And we talk about a lot when it comes to TVs specifically at a certain point, your eyes literally are not capable of telling a difference. Right. Right. There's just not possible. Diminished the law of diminishing returns plays the same way with video games where we're slowly but surely going to get to a place where we're not going to be able to see those jumps like we can like we mentioned before when you remade resident evil from resident evil to or resident evil 2 like you did the remake there like you're like holy fuck this is dude, like jesus christ this is crazy on how good this game looks and when you yeah. compare it to the original like this is not something that like Sure, you can tell, but like it's not game changing. And if you're going to do a remaster, a remake, like it needs to feel like that and look like that. Or you're just going to end up in a situation where we are right now where it's like, none of this makes sense. Why the fuck are you doing it? Please stop. Also, why is there a gun in the back of my head? And why is Sony whispering in my ear telling me that if I don't say the right thing next, they will shoot me? 
This game is going to be so exciting. Kayla in the chat. No, not the teat. Dude, you got to praise the teats, okay? Treat them correctly. I, yeah, I, I guess my, the, the thing that I, I do wonder if this, uh, if this is true and if this does happen, does it sell well? Or does it not sell well? Because if it doesn't sell well, then I would assume like, okay, they're not going to keep doing this. But if it does sell well, we're going to get fucking Spider-Man again on PS5, like a remake of, of we're going to get fucking like they're just going to keep going to the well because apparently people are buying it. Like, I, I don't think we've had sales numbers yet on The Last of Us Part 1, but if people buy it, they're going to keep doing it. So, you know, I we'll struggle. See. I struggle with this because part of me is like. I'm worried that if it doesn't sell well, then Sony's not going to look at it from the the lens of, oh, this game didn't sell well because it it people don't want a remaster of a game that's five years old or a remake of a game that's five years old. They're going to look at it and be like, people didn't buy this game because the developers made a bad version of it. Like maybe no, that's not the case. So like I'm torn on what to tell you. I don't want to tell you what to do. I always say vote with your wallet, but like I don't know how you should vote right now. Sure. Well, Terrible. there's only one way to find out, and that's whenever they give us real information, because these are all rumors. So we'll see what's what's real. But I am willing to believe that these rumors. Oh, yeah. I believe this a thousand percent of this shit's true. happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something else that's definitely happening on Thursday of this week came in. So <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I don't want to even talk about this. We're getting a Super Mario movie focused Nintendo Direct this week. On Thursday, October 6th at around 4 p.m. Eastern, a few hours after this episode is going to be released, the first official trailer for this movie is going to go live. We're going to hear Chris Pratt's voice. We're going to hear Jack Black's voice. We're going to hear Charlie Day as Luigi. We're going to hear Seth Rogen as fucking Donkey Kong. So here's the thing. Where's his? Where's this man's ass? Yeah, dude, no fucking ass on this boy. Like, I know I speak from a place of privilege with a fat ass. You do have a beautiful ass, but, but like, but you also because you have a beautiful ass, I feel like you're you have the ability to speak on if ass isn't beautiful. Sure, 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 sure. I just, I, I what I the reason I bring this up not necessarily to ask Shane Mario per se. What, what I actually want to talk about is we're about to get this trailer. Do we want to make some last minute predictions about what we're going to see in this? Other I mean, than Chris Pratt ruining our lives. I can tell you exactly how this is going to play out. Are you ready? Tell me. It's going to start with, with the Mario voice, and it's going to go, it's me. <laughs> and so he's going to clear his throat, and then it's mm. Chris Pratt's voice. He's like, hey, guys, it's me, Mario. Welcome to the Mushroom Kingdom. And uh, this is the place. And then it's going to fucking play some shitty pop song that's written by Justin Timberlake specifically for this movie. And it's just going to be playing in the background of him walking around. And there's going to be all these goofy little fucking stupid ass jokes happening. And Seth Rogen's going to be over there as Donkey Kong smoking a joint or some shit. I don't know. Probably not. But it's going to be fucking stupid. It's going to be fucking stupid. This is so fucking stupid. I hate all of this. This poster, I fucking hate this poster. <laughs> this poster I, I, literally makes me sick inside, Patrick. I, w I will say. I do kind of like the poster outside of the flat ass. But John makes a great point. John's keeping me honest. He says, I feel this is for inclusion. All the flat bottom boys feel represented. Mm. If you feel represented, John, then I don't want to take that away from you. Patrick, do you remember back in the day when movie posters were cool? Uh, I kind of remember. We used to get the coolest movie posters back yeah. in the day. Remember the 300 were, poster? Oh, dude, the 300 poster was fucking awesome. But the thing was, back in the day, they were trying to sell you to see a movie based on what the poster looked like. It's like, for instance, you go to the the you go to a fucking Blockbuster or Hollywood Video if you were Patrick, because that was what was closest to him. Uh huh. Then you go there, and your your mom's there with you, and she's like, "You could pick out one movie," and you're like, "Fuck, I gotta make this count." So you walk around. Right. You know yeah. nothing about half of the of 90% of the movies you know nothing about. So you look for the coolest poster you can find the coolest box art you can find. You're like, that's the game I'm going to get or that's the yeah. movie I'm going to get. We did this with video games, too. You're that right. That art has been entirely lost and it is evident in this flat ass Mario poster. Hmm. 
Sorry, John. <laughs> I'm excited uh, next week to for us to get to really talk about the trailer because this is be here. right now. This is a time capsule moment. Mm, you're this, gonna talk and, about it without me. Oh yeah, you're gonna be gone. You're gonna talk about it without me, Patrick. Damn, that's talk on about you. Me? Honestly, that's on you. That's on oh, no yeah, one but you. On me, yeah. Uh, I, you know what? That's fine. I'll just tell Sydney that I have to jump in on her honeymoon to talk about this. It'll be fine. Yeah. She'll if we can, it, it, if if the timing works out, if you guys just happen to not be busy, I don't know that I know where you're going, uh, and you want to call into the show, I'll have my phone on ring. That's all I'll say. But I right now, this is a time capsule moment. This is the last time we're going to be recorded, not knowing what Chris Pratt's Mario sounds like. And I think we, I think we just need to kind of take that in for a second live in that uncomfortable moment right now that this could be the last day we know peace. Jesus Christ. You ever thought Patrick that there are just more elements being added into the illusion that like, this is the matrix and like there's controllers that are like their lives aren't bad enough yet. So let's make it worse. And then they do some crazy ass shit like Donald Trump gets elected or Herschel Walker is split 50 50 with Raphael Warnock and Georgia Senate race. And you're like, in no world does this make sense. Yes. What if this is the cataclysm that just brings the whole matrix down? This is the, the uprising starts. October I know 6th I just at 4 PM. alienated all of our Nazi listeners, but you know what? Fuck you guys. Don't listen Correct. to us. Correct. I'll say it. Oh man. Fuck Herschel Walker. I really hope he doesn't like that piece of shit. Jesus um, Christ. yeah. Well, here's to hoping that Chris Pratt's Mario brings us all together and solves all the world's problems, but something Patrick, else won't happen. Let me, what if I told you that there might be something that could potentially save the timeline? Tell me about it. And that is CD Projekt Red announced a bunch of fucking shit. This comes from good old Joe Scrabbles over at IGN. CD Projekt Red has announced the code names and brief descriptions for five new games, including three Witcher games, a new cyberpunk, and a brand new IP. Revealed on Twitter, it marks a major step for the developer in multiple respects, from developing its own IP from scratch to developing multiple full-size games at one time. In a separate release, the company says it is also adding multiplayer to the majority of future projects. This also marks the first time that we've learned the new Witcher trilogy will not be uh, the only new games set in that universe. The five games are... Are you ready, Patrick? Oh, I'm so ready. Project Orion, a code name for our next cyberpunk game, which will take the cyberpunk franchise further and continue harnessing the potential of this dark future universe. Orion will be developed by a brand new CD Project Red studio set up in the U.S. Project Polaris, quote, co a code name for the next installment in the Witcher series of games, which will recently announced was in pre-production, is the beginning of a new saga. Well, we aim to release we aim to release two more Witcher games after Polaris, creating a new AAA RPG trilogy. The full trilogy is intended to be released in a six-year period. The next one is Canis Majoris, a full-fledged Witcher game separate to the new Witcher saga, starting with Polaris. It will be developed by an external studio headed by experienced developers who've worked on past Witcher games. It's not currently clear which developer is working on this project. Next one up is going to be Project Sirius, a codename for the game developed by um, the Molasses Flood. Uh, is this a Canadian developer, Patrick? Do we know? Uh, I don't know that we know. Okay. Uh, this is set in the Witcher universe and created with support from CDPR. It will differ from our past productions, offering multiplayer gameplay on the top of single-player experience, including a campaign with quests and a story. The last is Project Hadar or Hadar. Uh, it's co a codename for a third entirely distinct IP created from scratch within CDPR. The project is in the earliest stages of the creative process, which means we are not developing any game yet, but working exclusively on the foundation for this new setting. And that's it. That's a lot of stuff. Cayman, do you remember... Let's see, what year was this? Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 first announcement trailer. Let's see what year that was. I want to say it was like 1997. 2013. I was close. 2013 is when they announced Cyberpunk 2077. One game. That came out in 2020? 2021. So eight years later, that one game came out. 
These motherfuckers just announced like nine games. When are these coming out? Like in Project Polaris, the full trilogy is intended to be released, quote, in a six year period. There's a lot of I have a lot of question marks, a lot of red flags about all this. So I, I don't know. I don't have as many question marks and red flags. I think specifically because they have been very open that a lot of these projects will be worked by external developers or branches of themselves. So it almost feels more like that period when Rockstar wasn't so dependent on the success of one game only. And that game was Grand Theft Auto V where you were getting things like Midnight Club, uh, Rockstar's ten Table Tennis, Bully, Manhunt, where they were releasing games like every couple of years. Now, sure, as time's gone on, it takes way longer to release games. However, I think that's kind of what it sounds like CD Projekt Red is starting to do. Is they are still going to remain being a developer, similar to um, Rockstar. However, it does kind of feel like that they might be doing that same Rockstar move before they were bought out by 2K um, or Take-Two, where it was like, we're going to be releasing a bunch of shit and we have other developers within our branch. Like Rockstar had like eight studios at one point. Right. So I think that's kind of what they're doing right now. So this doesn't give me as much worry. What gives me worry is just the track record after or the track record leading up to and then the shit show that was the months after the release of, of Cyberpunk. It does seem like that CDPR has kind of learned their lesson, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. it started to do a lot of really good by the consumer. And I want to say it was just the other day that um, uh, Cyberpunk was actually the number one concurrent player. It's huge right now. Theme. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm want to jump back in. So like after the honeymoon, I'm like, shit, I might jump back in to do the next gen patch and like see all the new changes and updates. Cause I yeah. enjoyed the game and it's kind of broken state. So I am curious to see like how it is when it's actually real, but I don't know, man, I don't think that this is much to worry about. I think this is something that would be better to get more excited about because yeah, I, th I think the reason that I am so cautious and so skeptical at first sure. blush is because I loved The Witcher 3. I It was the first CD Projekt Red game I had played. It completely blew me away. Yeah. And then Cyberpunk just, it was such a letdown for me. And even, you know, I started, I, I, I started playing it when the next gen patch dropped a few months ago. And it just didn't really bring me in like The Witcher did. And so I just, with all the trials and tribulations that The Witcher had, I mean, sorry, Cyberpunk had, this is just a concerning next step for me. For them to say, all right, here's like seven or eight new things that we're going to be working on with the help of other people. But they there hasn't been that like prove it moment for me of like sure. kind of course correcting from the mistakes of cyberpunk. Now, granted, a lot of people I might disagree with me because of the, the state of the, the next gen patch. Um, but I don't know. I, I The most exciting thing for me here is The Witcher and like games set in the world of the witcher that aren't Geralt's perspective like that's the stuff that sure. i'm more excited about because cyberpunk i like the idea of cyberpunk it just i think the first personness of it is what what ultimately just didn't work with me and then also that they're doing something completely new and a new distinct ip that is not referencing other materials of some kind because like the witcher is based on books cyberpunk is based off of uh the old tabletop game so that's exciting as well. I, I don't. So I just wanted yeah. to say, like, I don't. I'm not being a, a total Grinch about this. I just don't want to be burned again, Cayman. I understand. I don't want to be burned again. I um. So that's the news for this week. This that's the last piece of news we're going to discuss before you're a married man, Cayman. Good Lord, Patrick, think about that. I've thought about it a lot. I know you want to marry me too, and that's weird that you would want to marry me, just yeah. like we've discussed. But hey, you know what? There's always a chance in the future. Sid will wise up and realize that I am truly a dumpster boy. So, and that oh. will be, <laughs> and that will be a scary moment, Cayman. Okay, so why don't we lean into that and talk about the 20 scariest moments in games ranked by Den of Geek? So I mentioned at the top of the episode. We're going to be doing some spooky content this month, Cameron. We are. And, you know, last year we were just but a baby, baby podcast. 
speaking of the teat, we were still on the teat then. I feel like we've spread our wings. We're paying taxes now. Metaphorically, we, we make no money on this podcast. We're not paying taxes on this podcast. Yeah, we don't make shit. I think we'd lost money on this podcast. Actually, we've lost. True, that is true. I, I, feel- I can tell you right now, between this and the STC, oh boy, my bank account struggling. Hey. So I'm gonna start up a GoFundMe page. So if you guys want to help a brother out, um, can you put a cost on happiness though? Can you put a cost on creative freedom? You know what they say: money can't buy happiness, but it also can't buy poverty. There you go. Uh, so what I want to do with this segment, uh, we're going to do, you know, one segment that's sp- intentionally spooky and another segment that's just going to happen to be spooky. Ooh, buckle up. Uh, so for this one, we're going to break down this list from Den of Geek, similar to if you listened to our episode a few weeks ago about the best GameCube games. We're going to be doing that but with this spooky list. So, Cayman, what I want to do mm-hmm. before we jump into the list you know, last year, almost exactly a year ago, we had a podcast episode where we talked about our favorite scariest moments in video games. So what I what I want to ask you is, do you have just a couple, you know, off the top of your head that you think are a lock to be on this list before we get into it? Um, so for me, the lock that I think is going to be... <sighs> I definitely think there's going to be the flood from hate the original halo combat evolved. I think that that is one of those like iconic scary moments. Sure. Um, I definitely think that we're going to get like the dog jumping through the window. Mm. The original resident evil is another really good classic scary moment. Um, you know, I think there's, 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 there's moments in a lot of games. What about you? What do you think is going to be a lock? Yeah, I think those those are two really good ones. I was going to say the Resident Evil one. I think there are probably a, some moments from games that I just haven't played yet. Like I bet there is an iconic Silent Hill moment that I just sure. am not familiar with. Yeah. Um, but I also I'm expecting there to be some some non horror game moments mm-hmm. in in this list. Um, so I'm excited to see the creativity of the list because I'm sure it's not going to be just. No, in dead space when you have to the fucking things going in your eye like I'm, that's probably going to be on the list but like it's not going to be just all of those kinds of moments There's so I'm, I'm excited to see what other moments are in here so why don't we jump in Cayman all right let's do we're it ju- we're jumping in with number 20 number 20 the night folk from Red okay. Dead Redemption 2 wander around Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption 2 swamps around 2am and you may stumble upon a woman crying next to a fire if you make the mistake of trying to help her She'll attack you and summon a group of zombie-like hillbillies known simply as the Night Folk. What mm. I love about this scare is the way it completely justifies the general sense of terror you feel when you walk through Red Dead Redemption 2's swamps while also being so shocking and, t- and intimidating that there's no way you can properly brace for yourself. I don't know that I encountered this moment. Yeah, it's, Red Dead Redemption it's, it's terrifying. Uh, I purposely sought this out because I saw this. Uh, I was like, hey, if you haven't found this weird ass moment in the game, you need to go find it. So I looked it up and uh, even knowing what I was getting into was terrifying. <laughs> and because uh, you really aren't expecting this. Like, I can only imagine what it would be like if you did not know this was going to happen. And then all of a sudden there was another moment in Red Dead 2, which I, I have a feeling probably won't pop on this list because it's very vague. Um, but basically you find like a deformed girl who's like in being is like locked up in a shed outside of a house. I that's a moment I did get. And I've stumbled upon that just completely blind and yeah. was like, fuck this shit. I don't know what's going on here, but I am not dealing with it. Spooky boy does not handle spooky games. <laughs> get out of here. The fuck um, out of here. Yeah, I yeah, that sounds cool. Um, I Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game I want to replay at some point. Um, we have some Such some submissions game, from the man. chat came in. Okay. Tony says any death in Dead Space, a great pull. Like yeah. similar to like a more modern example would be Tomb Raider. Like anytime you die in Tomb Raider, it's just the most gruesome fucking shit. Dead Space was like that too. That was maybe one of the first ones to do it, where every time you die, it's just like it's so so terrible. Uh yeah, John says Silent Hill, Resident Evil, Parasite Eve. 
uh, those are some of the guesses he has. Kayla has a question that I, I want to. Uh, I my the answer for me is no, but she wants to know if either of us played Layers of Fear. Did you play Layers of Fear? Kayla? No, I didn't play Layers of Fear. That's actually I want to say that's Bloober Team. It is that, that made Layers of Fear. Um, I want to say the was it the original and Kayla can can probably chime in and tell us was it that one of the games apparently was really good and one of the games was apparently not good. And that's why people are terrified that Bloober Team is taking over Silent Hill, apparently. Um, so I don't particularly know. I never played the game. I've seen speed runs of it, and I could definitely tell this game is terrifying. So. Yeah. I, I, If memory serves, I think Layers of Fear 2 was the one that didn't re uh, review very well. But mm. let's go to number 19, Dinner with the Cannibals, The Walking Dead Season 1. This is a great pull. Just get out of here. Just and and actually, let me take house. this moment to quickly say there might be some spoilers in this list. So I guess beware, because this is a uh, this is one of those moments where if you like you don't see it coming for a while. But once you realize what's happening, what a cool moment. Um, yeah. It, so in this game, Walking Dead season one, you play as Clementine or no, sorry, sorry. You play as Lee, uh, this gentleman who was on his way to prison when the zombie outbreak uh, occurred and similar to uh, the last of us he stumbles across this girl and he like kind of like becomes her caretaker um but there's a scene later in the season where yeah you're you're at dinner with this family that you think you know everything's hunky-dory and then you realize they're mm -hmm. gonna try to eat you there's a distinct moment in the scene where Clementine goes to take a bite of food and Lee has realized what's happened and you're you're given the option to be like Clementine, don't eat that. And it's like that moment when you when you get this, you're just like, oh my god, I don't like any of this anymore. Yeah, oh, that what game a great was moment. So fucking good though. God, season one was arguably one of the greatest. I would say season one of The Walking Dead. If you played it after like the PlayStation Four version, the PlayStation Three version was so fucking bugged out. Um, arguably the best Telltale game. Yeah. Oh, so good. Easy. So good. Number 18, Running from Mr. X, Resident Evil 2 Remake. Yeah. Now, this is... Yeah. 100%. Like, I don't think there's really much to say here. Not much to say there. Yeah. Terrifying. You're chased by a monster. Yeah. Fucking Colossus from the X-Men, essentially, is just trying to kill you and can go through doors. Yes. Um, Number 17, Deleting All of Your Saves, Ooh. Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. This is a great yeah. one. And this is actually something yeah. I forgot happened in the game. So I'm going to read this little blurb. Eternal Darkness's brilliant use of a sanity meter that causes your character to experience hallucinations is one of the best mechanics in horror game history. However, that already brilliant concept is never better than when one of Eternal Darkness's sanity freakouts leads you to believe that the game is deleting all of your saves. Even once you understand that the game is going to mess with you in these kinds of ways, nothing can, can quite prepare you for the genuine meta scare of believing that all of your hard work has just vanished. It's the perfect realization of a fear that every gamer from a certain era has dealt with. That was a thing perfect in that era. Perfect game to be fucking remastered, like remade from the ground up. 100%. Perfect game to do that. It's funny because this is also one of those, it's like this, and I think of Metal Gear uh, Solid 1, where like these shticks that they did to fuck with you, wouldn't really work today though. Like that's not necessarily something that would work the same way because we did like back then we had memory cards. Not true. And no, you, you think not it would true. still work? It would be very difficult to implement because of where you're playing it. But if so, let's say if it's like a PlayStation five, um, like exclusive, you could throw up in game. You could design it to pull up and be like corrupted save file. Hmm. Sure, do sure. some shit like that like you could still do it you couldn't do like that you need to plug in the second controller to beat mantis like plug your controller to the second port to be able to beat mantis like you couldn't do that but something like this right. i still think you could but i don't i think it would be very difficult because you would have to really tailor it to each specific console yeah. or pc like it would have to there are be games, tough. there are games on PC that do this. I want to say that one of them is um what was the name? Something with Emily was in the name. Emily's away. Emily's away did something similar to this where it would give you like the task manager would like pull up and be like fuck with you and be like every like your system's shutting down, it's mm. non-responsive stuff like that. And I want to say Doki Doki Literature Club does something similar to that as well. Yeah, I've not played it, but I know that there's a turn in that game. Uh, yeah, to go back to Layers weird. of Fear for a second, uh, Kayla says, Layers of Fear is crazy. I really enjoyed the first one. It was a little strange, but it was terrifying. 
I didn't play the second one, so okay. she cannot speak to number well, two. Well, Kayla, you let us down, so just know that. <laughs> we still love you. We still love you. You're just let us down. It's fine. Come on. We, 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 we need to be nice to Kayla. She's great. Fair. She's uh, great. Number 16, Discovering Death Class Sanctuary Fallout 3. Fallout 3 is filled with genuinely terrifying moments, but few compared to discovering the Death Claws Sanctuary, an entire part of the map filled with Death Claws has to be one of the biggest nopes in video game history. So for those of you who maybe didn't play Fallout 3, Death Claws are these just fucking massive monsters that like are so much more powerful than anything else that you play that like it, when you realize that you're in a place where there's like 90 of them, it's like, oh, okay, I'm in huge trouble. Right? Isn't the Death Claws Sanctuary as well? It's like if you just beeline, like take a straight shot, from the opening area to like your first mission objective, you actually pass it. Maybe I don't remember for certain. Cause there's a point where you do, you pass, like if you go straight, you pass like a, like a couple death calls. It might be the death call sanctuary. It might be a, just a bunch of death calls are in this one spot. And it's like a great way of the game to be like, Hey, you need to be very careful when you're walking around the wasteland sure. because you can get your shit fucked real fast. Number 15, Laura from the evil within. Fuck that bitch. Who that what like i absolutely I had, nope, nope nope i had blocked this out of my memory that shit was so terrifying yeah this needs uh, to be like evil i think evil within would be a great movie Ooh, yeah i agree for sure yeah Ooh, ooh. just yeah, seeing no, that image just just noping right out of that one yeah another big note moment tony says in the chat uh, the museum of witchcraft and fallout 4 also big note mm, moment, yeah 100%. Good yeah um, number 14, the matchmaker's layer condemned criminal origins. Oh my God. Yeah. So okay. this, this is a game that I think a lot of people might've probably missed. I know you and I have played it cause we've talked about it before, yeah. but this is a game. I think it originally came out on the Xbox 360, right? Yeah. 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 And it was a first person, uh, like survivally horror type game. Um, but you were like, a an investigator, right? Mm -hmm. You were a detective. You're a detective and there's a serial killer and you're trying to like find the serial killer. And there is this moment with the matchmaker's layer where there's this like theme throughout the video game where there's like mannequins all over the place and you're in this place and the mannequins start coming alive and they're not mannequins. They're people trying to kill. This you. would be another game. Perfect for remaster. Oh my God. I would love a new. You remaster. could really with like good lighting effects. You could make that game fucking terrifying the second game came out on the playstation 3 as well as xbox 360 not as good yeah um, yeah the second one definitely not as good oh my god please get me out of here no just move past this yep. one i don't even want to talk about it number 13 the rat king the last of us part two we talked about this a lot last can i tell October. you can i tell you a story about this yes so so the lead up to the rat king um is you're going through like this absolutely terrifying it's like pitch black you got nothing but a flashlight and then every once in a while you'll get to like an area where it's just red lights and you have to like turn on generate you're like turning shit on and you're like trying to get through this area and every moment you're like something is going to attack me but nothing ever does and because nothing ever does your anxiety just heightens and heightens and heightens right before i open the door to get into the the parking garage where the Rat King is, Sydney jumps out from but like around the corner and just scares the ever living shit out of me. I straight up don't think I've screamed like that since I was a little kid. Awful. And then immediately when she walks away, I open the door and I'm like, <sighs> open the door and this fucking monstrosity is coming at me. And I'm like, I hate all of this. Leave me alone. I don't want to do this game anymore. That is truly so cruel. Yeah, it was bastard. Yeah, level Cause material. honestly, yeah, this, this moment in this game is like top three most terrifying moments for me. Cause yeah, you, you nailed it. It's the tension. It's the lead up. It's that like, you know, something's coming. And then when it does come, it is like the most horrifying thing ever to exist. Uh, here we go. Layers of fear. Number right. 12, the child's room. Um, around the time you've convinced yourself that you've seen it all in layers of fear, you'll find yourself in the middle of a child's room where a music box projects uh, music box projects various innocent illustrations on the walls. The moment you interact with the music box is the moment you begin what could be described as a journey through hell that leaves you dreading, what the next rotation will reveal that little blurb alone has me sold to play this video game in the month of October. I plan on playing a few short horror games that I've not played before. Jump uh, into the DBD so, with us, Patrick. 
So I, I, I do want to play a little bit of that too, because I, I want to have as much context for the bracket at the end of the month as I can, because I've played a, a fair amount of horror games, but there are some big ones I've missed. So I want to like, I want to try to play Silent Hill this month. Kayla, if you're still in the chat, how about how long is Layers of Fear? Because uh, I might add that to my list if I have time. Number 11, The Ladder. Oh God, The fear. Ladder. Yeah. I this is a moment. This. this is another one I totally forgot about. So Fear was a 2005 video game on the original Xbox, probably PS2 as well. I just I had rented it on Xbox, and it's one of those moments where you it's I, I've seen it done in other games before, but this is a really good use of it where you do this thing a thousand times in the game. It's this animation. You're going down a ladder. You like you lose control for five seconds because the animation plays where you get on the ladder. And there's this one time where you get on the ladder and as you turn, this girl is just right in front of you. And it just, it's fucking terrifying. And I love that shit. It spooks you real good. There's another one. I don't know if it'll be on this list, uh, but in Batman Arkham Knight, when uh, there's a moment where you've grappled 3,500 times in this video game and you grapple one time over this roof and man that is there and like jump scares you mm. and i about shit myself when that happened <laughs> but similar similar type thing number 10 the bear trap from until dawn oh the fucking bear trap i actually yeah. don't remember this but i i, I played until dawn I want to say that the bear trap was like one of those where you had to do like a very specific mm. set of events to get it. So uh, it's one of the, I, I remember it now. Uh, I'll, I'll just read the blurb. Um, blah, 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 blah. However, even they may struggle to deny the effectiveness of this incredible scene that sees you get your fingers stuck in a bear trap and you have to choose to amputate them uh, to try and free yourself before a mysterious apparent threat attacks you from the shadows. So it's that like it, there is tension, but also a choice. Like, do I gamble that there's actually a thing here that's going to kill me? Or do I cut my finger off? Uh, like, yeah, I, I like when games present me with that choice of I have to decide whether or not it's worth cutting my fingers off to survive. Um, number nine, the Noon Tech Diagnostic Machine from Dead Space 2, which, yeah. Saying the noon tech diagnostic machine from Dead Space 2 would mean nothing to me, but this is yes. the scene where there's like a thing going into your eye. It's the eyeball scene. It's the eyeball scene um, from Dead Space 2. If, you, yeah, if you're doing the video version, uh, I have some, it's given us some pictures as we go through. But yeah, that was, I remember that so vividly. And I, I wonder if the Dead Space remake is laying the groundwork for a Dead Space 2 remake or if it's opening it up for them to do like a Dead Space 2 like reimagining like we've done dead space one and now we're going to make a new dead space two. I wonder like if either of those are, are in the works or if it's just, we're making dead space and then we're going to do our own thing. Um, because yeah, dead space two fucking great. Silent Hill three, the, the fucking mirror, mirror the is number fucking eight. mirror. Patrick skip this. Cause you're going to play silent Hill three. Great. You, you can't just, yeah, good. Just yeah. Here. So here, actually, here's my question. <laughs> you know, this is like one of the best moments of that entire game. Yeah, I, I won't read a thing. I've we've already moved on. But should I do if I only have time to do one Silent Hill? Should I Silent do two Hill. or three? I would say Silent Hill three specifically because I think Silent Hill three has the better mechanics. Okay, um, it, you're, there's going to be some some like callbacks and stuff because it does follow a character from earlier in the series. Uh, but I don't think it's necessary. Like you'll be fine if you had to choose. I, I still think that Silent Hill two it gives you the most Silent Hill. Um, Silent Hill 2 gives you the essentially just the most Silent Hill experience. Like okay. you'll know what Silent Hill is because of that. However, I do think that Silent Hill 3 is just better mechanically, um, and more mechanically sound as a game. And also, I think it's got some arguably some more terrifying moments in it. Gotcha. In okay. I'll, I'll try. I just googled them real quick. Apparently, Silent Hill 2 is eight hours and three is six hours. So. Yeah, they're not. They're not like I said. They're they're fairly short games. Like you could you can in one sitting you can beat both of them. Sure, it's a long sitting. I mean, you, I would say you get up and stretch your legs. You don't want blood clots. Yeah, right. Yeah, I definitely no. don't want blood clots. Number seven. This is one that you mentioned. Yeah, the dog jumping through the window in the original Resident Evil. Terrifying. Terrifying moment. Uh, what like perfect use of jump scare because it not only is it a jump scare but it has that moment of. Ooh, a dog just jumped through. Oh, this dog is this bad. Like this is a zombie dog. And so it has that like that second moment of oh shit. 
which I love. I love the second shit. You know well, what I mean? Get, like the the I think the opening of Resident Evil when you get the creaking door and then you get the 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 shot of the zombie like going like is it was one of the most terrifying things to me as a kid. But I think this one because this is more gameplay centric is the most terrifying probably moment of the entire game. Yeah. Uh, number six, Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head's introduction, Silent Hill 2. I'm also going to skip this. Yes, skip that too. That's a great moment. I look forward to speaking on it. Yeah, you're, I think you'll really enjoy it. If you can get past maybe the dated mechanics. Yeah, I, 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 I bet I will. I think you're... Um, number five, this is a game I've not played. From played... Fatal Frame 2, Crimson Butterfly, The Falling Woman. I've played... Whoa, what was the one on... There was one on the Wii... That I played. It was honestly fairly. I enjoyed it. Middle frame. We. What was the name of that? Mask one? of the Lunar Eclipse. Yeah, I played that one, and I actually liked it. It was the only Fatal Frame game I played. And you're, I mean, if you owned a Wii and you actually wanted to use it as a real console outside of just playing Wii Sports and like Super Mario Galaxy, like you were kind of fucked. Sure. On games, and yeah. at least if you wanted mature games, correct. Weren't like there were very few. Yeah, and this was like that was one I, I enjoyed it though. I think Fatal Friends got a good, a good vibe to it. Number four, the hiding place kill, Alien Isolation. This, yeah, th this is a great pull. So Alien Isolation is a first person game set in the world of Alien, and you're trying to survive on this ship, but like you don't have weapons because the Xenomorph is like way stronger than you. Uh, so like, there's no point in even trying to kill it. And uh, it, it's such a smart game in that like there are ways that it fucks with you. And yeah, one of those ways, like it, after a certain point, it can figure out like it, usually the hiding place is like safe, but it's not always safe. Mm -mm. And that first time the hiding place is not safe came in fucking horrifying. <sighs> that was, this is one of the few games that I just, stop playing because yeah. i was like i'm too big of a wimp for this shit yeah number three the flooded room from an amnesia the dark descent this is another one i'm gonna skip because i've not played it and as i've been putting together like the preliminary list of spooky games for the bracket amnesia the dark descent is on like every top horror games list so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to play it by the end you have not played this game either have you no no i have not played it how long to beat amnesia but if that uh if that sense. screenshot looks familiar i definitely have played this hours. next game <sighs> number two the groom from outlast whistleblower which i don't think i played I, I guess whistleblower must be dlc yeah yeah i didn't play the dlc but if this is number two i think i might need to go back and play outlast whistleblower no no Oh god, it's so bad. No, it's a great game. It's just so terrifying. Outlast, the first, original Outlast, so fucking scary. The and... groom is oh boy. The groom is just it's a, just one of those moments in time in which if you know, you know. I don't know, unfortunately. Um, but I remember uh last year when we were talking about our, our favorite or our scariest games you had said that atlas was one of yours and i believe if i remember correctly i was like i didn't finish atlas because i was too scared and that is still true yeah this is the the outlast was the game that made me realize i hated horror games that i had no agency over mm, my survival outside of sure. running yeah that that makes sense it really <sighs> it really amps it up when you have no way of defending yourself Let's just put it this way. The groom is very not safe for work. And mm. if you try to find videos of it on YouTube, you probably can't. Interesting. Wow. Okay. That is, yes. that says a lot. Um, so we're on to number one. Do you have any guesses, any final guesses about what number one might be? Damn. What number one could be. That's a good question. I don't know. I, I, I feel like all of these have been really good. What, what is your guess? Or have you already read this before? I, I did scroll ahead, so I do know. So I, my guess, I would be, I would be lying, if I guessed. Okay. And I, I don't. Want, I never want to lie to you. Do you think? Do Do I know what it is? Yes. Okay. Number one. 
Seeing Lisa in the hallway from PT. Oh, okay. Yeah. The play. We'll tease her. While it's incredibly difficult to pick just one scary moment from PT to highlight as the absolute scariest, I'm fairly comfortable awarding that honor to a scene we recently named one of the scariest images ever. The first time you see Lisa in the hallway. There's a degree to which the image above itself really tells you all you need to know about why this moment is scary, but there's something to be said for the context of the moment as well. It's one of the game's earliest scares, and it immediately informs you that this thing you chose to submit yourself to is going to be so much worse than you likely ever anticipated. And honestly, it is a goddamn shame that we did not get Silent Hills made yeah. by Hideo Kojima. Yeah. I don't because... you know. Honestly, I, you say I, we say that, but like, yes, this this trailer was ab- or like the playable teaser was absolutely fucking terrifying. But at the same time, like Kojima is known for just making games that make absolutely no fucking sense. So I'm not sure if I would enjoy it as much as like an actual like. Because the thing is, in Silent Hill, it, there's a lot of ambiguity and a lot of like you have to read between the lines and make up your own conclusions on certain things. But like, yeah. I don't know if could if, with Kojima going into a series already does that makes me terrified to think that he would just go in and be like, nothing means anything in the, the you j- is all politics now. And sure. what are those politics? No one knows. Also, you be... want to walk a lot? Guess what? <laughs> I mean, I, I would be willing to bet if in a horror game, he wouldn't go that he wouldn't go the political route. I would love to see him reined in and like actually doing something. See, I feel like a not... horror game by a Kojima would be like peak Kojima. It would be so nonsensical, but in a fucking creepy way. And I would be all for it personally. But that is the 20 scariest moments in games ranked according to Den of Geek. And I got to say, I think that was a pretty good list. I, I didn't know all of the moments, but I'm a little bummed that they didn't include the flood from yeah. halo because I, I think that that's like one of the greatest scary moments in a game that's not horror but even a scary moment in a game that just a scary moment it's fucking yeah. terrifying yeah i but, i agree patrick what if i posited to you this Bring it. you get the option to create a game that might scare people in a lot of different ways mm-hmm. and if i ask you because i did this last week for you to create your dream game. Yes, sir. How would you feel about that? I would love that. I know we're running a little long, so we I'll, I'll keep it brief. That's I'll, fine. You do I'll, whatever you need to do. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I know. I feel good about this. I, I thought a lot about... So last week, if you haven't listened to last week's show, first of all, what are you doing with your mind? Uh, last week, I asked Kamen a series of questions to build his dream video game. And he's going to ask me those same questions I'm going to build my dream video game and then later, either this month or maybe next month, because we do have a lot of spooky stuff down the pipeline. We're going to put these two games together and have the audience pick which game they would rather play. So we'll see what happens when that happens. But this is step two of that journey we're taking together. So, Cayman, I hand the microphone back to you. All right, Patrick. We're going to start off with the basics on your game. So we're going to start with just your your main gameplay genre that you want your game to be. Platformer, action adventure, turn base. What are you feeling is going to be the perfect Patrick game? I am leaning into the month of October. I want this to be a survival horror game. Okay, all right. Now you have a secondary gameplay genre. Now normally with survival horror, you're looking at some s- stealth elements, some puzzle elements. What are your what are you what's what going to be your your uh, your secondary gameplay genre that you? Want I definitely to i I am interested in this being uh, puzzle, uh, heavy on the puzzle aspect. I don't know exactly what those puzzles look like yet. You know we haven't assembled a team, but I love. I love a good, whether it's Resident Evil, another game that does puzzles that's also mm. horror. I, I I I am infatuated by the horror game puzzle trope mm. because usually they're so silly. Sure. Yeah. But I would love to see them like actually make sense and like serve the narrative. Ooh. Okay. So that would be my goal for them like to serve that. the narrative. Now, would this be a single or multiplayer game? This is a single player game through and through. Sure. Sure. That makes sense. A uh, number of playable characters during the gameplay setting. So I I want there to be multiple playable characters. But are we talking like, class characters? Or are we talking like 
You have so, multiple narrative characters. What are we? What are we talking here? I think multiple narrative characters. So I, I I'm thinking, um, like they're similar to Resident Evil Two. You might start the game playing as protagonist one. He's gonna, he or she's gonna con, or he, she, or they are gonna come in contact with protagonist number two throughout the game, and then once you roll credits, play it again as protagonist number two. Get a whole nother perspective really kind of flesh out the rest of the story i that was like my favorite thing about resident evil 2 was that second playthrough seeing like all the ways that the narrative Mm, kind of weaved together so i want that for this game all right now where's your game going to be set this is where it starts to not sound like a resident evil game all right i love the sound of that i want this to be in a gothic setting so we talking bloodborne are we talking like maybe uh, like bloodborne maybe like bloodborne but like a victorian type um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a real place like England, but because uh, I feel like usually Gothic equals London and I, I'm not I don't necessarily want London specifically, but I do think that like old timey, not a ton of technology, uh, very kind of the cities are very like close. Like, Would the... you say like Dishonored style steampunk? Mm. Mm. Well, with Dishonored, it was whale punk, you might remember. Oh, good call. Whale punk, sorry. The the very common genre the of very, whale the very punk. Very common whale punk. Um maybe steampunk. I don't love steampunk, but I do think that maybe that's getting us somewhere because the one benefit of steampunk is that you can have like uh pieces of technology that don't fit the time period. So maybe steampunk just without the goggles. Okay. I went with not not steampunk. Okay, okay. Okay, next up is going to be your game structure. Linear, open world, non-linear. What are you looking at in your game? I I kind of, I'm interested in the idea of it being a little non-linear. Okay. Um, Multiple thinking of out. Thinking of a game like Deathloop, where the way it was built, you can kind of pick where to go to start. Like there is, ultimately there is, there are things that you have to do, but you can kind of do them in whatever order you would like. And that kind of freedom was fun. I actually, I want to go back to the setting for just a second. I want to expand on that a little bit. Sure. So in these kinds of survival horror games, typically you are the human and your foe is the supernatural creature. Mm -hmm. I want to flip the script in this video game and you are the supernatural creature and the foes are humans hunting you. So I think the protagonists of this game will be like vampires. And vampire hunters are trying to kill you. I don't know exactly like how, you know, it, it's all kind of foggy. It's all shaping in my mind. But I'm, I'm very interested in the concept of you being supernatural and that being the reason why people are trying to kill you. I love that, actually. That's a really good, that's a really interesting concept. I don't think we've seen. Right? Yeah. I think it'd be pretty cool. That is, that is very cool. Yeah, I love that. All right, so moving down, narrative structure. Are we going cinematics heavy, story focus? Are we talking lore driven a la Demon Souls, light emphasis on story, but still with narrative through line, no story at all, et cetera, et cetera? I think it, I, I want to go cinematics heavy story focused. I want this to be there. We're weaving a tale. Uh, and the cinematics are going to be breathtaking. I love it. What is your graphical style? When I was first piecing this together, I asked myself, would a non-realistic graphic style make sense here? And I think the answer is no. I think this needs to be realism. I think it needs to be based in realism. But if there's anyone in the audience that has a graphical style that might fuck with this uh, with this game See, I'm creating. And maybe it's just the, the Victorian Gothic setting that you've kind of established. A lot of where I'm going is, in my head at least, is thinking of like Bloodborne, unfortunately, yeah. is kind of what I'm thinking in terms of your, your graphical style. But like I do like the idea of like having something akin to even death loop i was about to say what if it's like like but not like brightly colored shit like i think you know having more realistic but still a little different all right i to go back to the uh when you said not not steampunk i have a new term that i'm introducing to the lexicon today 
I want it to be steam funk. Ooh, I have no clue what that even means and how this works in this game. But now you've locked your pick. Your steam funk. Yeah, this game is it's a steam funk setting because it so it has that like gothic style, but it, there's color, there's pop, there's okay. like yeah, it, it's it's death loop style in that way. But I like uh, it. Yeah, so steam funk. I think we just made our first million. I think you just we just did. We really just did. Now your combat style perspective. Are you going first person like like death loop? You go in third person. <laughs> Are you breaking it up? Are you going to do a little bit of both? Are you going to be combat now heavy? That's you interesting. Go, oh, running. What are you doing? Now that's interesting. At first, it was a clear locked in third person over the shoulder. But since I am a supernatural creature, most likely a vampire, maybe it could be cool if there are certain elements that you do in first person. So I'm going to do it's I'm going to say it's third person heavy. But there are some first person elements. Uh related to the supernatural parts of the game God, this game I, I just want to play this game right now and that's Love why it's it. my dream game came in now in terms of your actual combat style i'm assuming because you're going to have first person elements that are going to be supernatural that you, there will be combat to a degree yeah definitely there will be combat i i don't necessarily want the majority of the combat to be in the first person hmm. while i have really loved games like death loop and bioshock i do prefer a third person perspective when it like like right now playing through god of war i love yeah. being able to see my character um so i do i do want and there yeah there will be combat i i'm i don't necessarily i don't want it to be gun focused mm-hmm so maybe, I mean, if I'm a fucking vampire, I, I feel like it'll probably be like melee focused and I can just fucking rip people apart. You I just could, gotta be careful yeah. that they you don't. could have some elements. You could throw in some shit like you could throw like a bat, mm, like you sure. do like a dishonor does where you could do like, like instead of a swarm of rats, like you could like swarm of bats or some sure shit. I don't know. yeah I'm maybe sure. there's some in this in this steam funk world. Maybe there's some some magic type elements that vampires possess could be cool now this is going to be still be very survival heavy yes because i mean i'm but like that's to go back to like the setting part of it where i kind of like I flipped it on its head a little bit mm-hmm. i think the survival part of it i don't necessarily think it's going to be like because of like with the last of us like you're always running out of of things i don't necessarily think it's going to be that because i'm a vampire like i'm fucking eternal bitch but I so I think survival will be more like it'll be easy to die and like that kind of thing. Like survival doesn't equal items. Survival equals something else. Uh, yeah, if that makes sense. You could do there's I forget what the game was, but there was a game where it was like when the sun comes up, you have to play in the shadows. Like was a pretty interesting concept. I forgot what was the that game. the darkness was that, is that the darkness. Oh, that or? was it. That was it. It was uh, you could only use your certain powers if you were in like you had. That's to be cool. In the dark I like game. that. Yeah. Okay. Now moving on to the character audio design, and we have a silent protagonist, full voice cast, no VO, etc. What are, were you? What's the audio looking like for your your characters? I so there's a couple things I, I want to mention here. I want. Okay it to be entirely voice acted across the board, both my character uh, and every other character in the game. But I also similar to dishonored. I also want there to be a, uh, some sort of a voice like without a physical form that goes on this journey with me. Mm. So like, think like, like in Zelda, like you always have like the little Navi or whatever, uh, something like that, like the heart in Dishonored, uh, that is always like, it's kind of like you're not necessarily a guide, but like it's always there. It's like with the protagonist. I love it, it is a part of like Mimir in God of War kind of thing, like that similar kind of thing. Sounds good to me. Actors involved. Do you have anyone that you think would be good for these roles? Or is this something that it's kind of like I was where it was like, eh, it doesn't need to be anyone in particular. As yeah, as good. I think I think I want us to 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 mimic that, and yeah, so not anyone in particular. I mean, I could throw Troy Baker in this sure. easily. Yeah. I'm, I, he'd be a great protagonist, I'm sure. 
Uh, but yeah, I think it's it's um, I want to see I want to see what what talent is out there but that doesn't have a big name for this. And maybe there might be some B actors. Maybe Eric Roberts will come in here. You know what? As I a, think Eric Roberts would be a fantastic choice for every single character, all including the female characters. John asked a question in the chat uh, that it's a good clarifying question for this this like non physical voice. Is it a narrator or a character that you actually talk to? Ooh, I actually want this to. I want them to act as both. Okay, I want this this non physical voice to be both narrator and character with the protagonist. Okay, perfect. Game director, anyone in particular in mind? That's no me, one? baby. Oh, you, Patrick. Yeah. That's right. That's how we did it. We are our own game directors because exactly. that is stupid as shit if we are. Studio. Anyone in particular you want to be behind making this game? I think, you know, even though I can't think of a game in which they made in the third person, I think a lot of what I described today sounds very arcane. Like I, I don't disagree. I so I'm going to go really arcane for this, which I guess I technically would make the publisher Xbox since they are now owned by Xbox. That is true. Not arcane. But, in, but if it's, it, you know, I'm making this world. So I do still want this sure. to be published by Sony. Okay. So we're doing, um, so you want it to be a Sony published game or it's going to be available on all platforms? It's going to be available on, on all platforms. I just yeah. feel like when Sony publishes a game, it means more than when Xbox publishes a game. That's specifically true. from a narrative perspective. Like Sony true. is known for their narratives. So I want Sony, people to know that this is going to be a narrative driven game. But PC as well. We'll say butt PC as well. Sure. All right, Patrick, let me read you your game back to you. Actually, no, before we do that, what is the name of your game? Oh, right. The name. Uh, let's do the recap. Let me let me simmer on a name. The recap of your game. Basics. It's going to be a survival horror game heavy on puzzle aspects, uh, Resident Evil style. It's going to be a single-player game. However, you will have multiple narrative characters. Think RE2 and its branching paths. Setting type. Victorian Gothic, a.k.a. Steam Funk. You're the monster being hunted by humans. Your game structure is non-linear, but similar to Deathloop in the sense that you have a not open world, but somewhat open area where you can kind of take your own uh, struck or take your own path. Uh, your narrative structure is going to be cinematics heavy focused with a heavy emphasis on story. Your graphical style will be realism. Hashtag steam funk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your combat style third person heavy. However, there will be first-person elements related to the supernatural aspects of the game. Your combat will exist. You will have light range contact or combat with some magic, but very heavy on the survival aspects of that. Yeah. You will be easy to die, so remain in the shadows. Your character audio designs will be entirely voice acted, a voice that follows you around and talks to you and has conversations with the main character. Your actors involved are going to be good actors, but no top New Year <laughs> names necessary. <laughs> That's what I said, I think, if I verbatim. The game director obviously is going to be you. You'll be your studio developing the game will be Arcane Studios, and your publisher will be Sony, but it will come out on PC as well. Now, the name, Patrick, after I've told you exactly what your game is going to be. What is I know I made this game, but can we just acknowledge that this game sounds pretty fucking dope? Dude, your game sounds fucking awesome. I'd play this shit. I'd play Working this shit. title, but as of right now okay. in this exact moment. Working title. It's called Shadow. That's it? Just, just Shadow. <laughs> just, how about the title is just, just Shadow? <laughs> All right, your working title is called Shadow. Very good. I love it. Honestly, I would play the fuck out of this game. What if? And just I'm I'm pitching here, spitballing a little yep, bit. Yeah, I know we're running very long, but spit. Hear me out. Yeah. What if your second character flipped the script? Human, <laughs> who is trying to work and help you, a la Ada Wong. RE4. I love it. So I think the I think the main character's name here is going to be Shadow. That's why it's called Shadow. As okay. of right now. Working title. 
Ooh, but you, what if your monster is a shadow, not a, not a vampire? Ooh, it's like an interesting. actual shadow creature, a interesting. shadow entity. I could fuck with that. Uh, and and uh, uh, so the 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 Ada Wong type human character uh, is going to be called uh, Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> game is ruined now. Yeah, it just I just it, yeah, it just got canceled. Well, Patrick, I love this game that you just created. Thanks. We're we're gonna work on the title because I totally forgot the title was a thing. What did we say your your game was called? Do you remember? It was called like The Unbroken or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, working title, we'll figure it out, but I like Shadow for now. I love your game though. It's so different than my game. Like, All right? That's like, different. I'm glad we did it this way because we, uh, honestly, we, at like answer five for you, I was like, wow, this are like my actual dream game is basically like exactly this. But like this, I love survival horror. I just don't play them that much. So I'm I'm all in on this game. Fair point. So that is the end of creating our dream game round two. We're going to be bringing this back. Uh, at some point, you guys are going to be seeing posters of these, but I want to, I want to put to you, the audience, what is your dream game? Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to figure out where to put this and I'll mention it in socials. I want to put this like questionnaire somewhere. Maybe I'll put maybe I'll make like a Google form. Ooh, good call. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a Google form. And put this in the description of the podcast for this episode. Let us know what your dream game is, and we'll read a couple uh, in our next episode that you're here, Cayman. I won't do this next week uh, with our special guests. I will do this the week that you get back. Um, but that's our show. Beautiful show. A t- <laughs> 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 can i just say <laughs> <laughs> oh i left the studio uh oopsie oopsie daisy <laughs> uh can i just say a tight 131 hour oh 31 my minutes god wowzers i, I definitely wait. did not think that this episode was gonna be this all but fuck yeah i can't wait to listen to that moment and oh my post. god yeah. uh Thanks for coming along on this very long ride with us. I know, I know, we we kept you for for a lot of your day. There, there's a whole calendar update that I, I, we've truly gone so long that I, I might just include this next week. Um, because honestly, there's not a there's not a whole lot to to say here, other than Skull and Bones has been delayed for like the fifth time to next year. Um, but new Xbox Game Pass games, PS Plus games, they're all announced and coming out. So if you're interested in those, go take a look online. But in the meantime. Thank you for coming along on this ride with us. We thank you. We love you. You can follow me on Twitter at Patrick Schwag. You can follow Cayman on Twitter at Kid Cayman. You can follow the pod on Twitter at Spot Games Pod. Or you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch at Spotlight Games Pod. Make sure you follow us on Twitch so you know when we go live for the rest of October for Spooklight Games so you can be part of the conversation. Cayman, from all of us here at Spotlight Games... We wish you a happy wedding. Oh, this is just the two of us. Just you and me. We all wish you a happy wedding. Thanks. Next time we see you, you're going to be wearing a big chain and a ring. Yep. And I couldn't be more thrilled and happy and proud and excited. So until then, just remember.